Alright guys, this is the Troy Built Horse One with Tecumseh HM80 XLC cast iron sleeve extra life motor. Eight horsepower with the Tecumseh carburetor. I'm guessing it's a Tecumseh carburetor. That's what the replacement said it was Tecumseh. I don't know if one of the other manufacturers actually makes them or not. I'm not sure. If you know, let us know. So this thing, I think the mixture screw there, it's missing a seat or something in there. And I need to clean it up again. I will get this carburetor going. But the wife needed to get her tilling done, so we got to get this thing going pronto. So I'm going to pull the breather side off first. This carburetor sandwiched between the intake and the breather. Most of these engines have a smaller breather, like a horseshoe looking one. It's just a temporary gasket I made out of a piece of cardboard. Just to see if the carburetor cleaned up well, and it, it did not. I'll just let that hang there. So pinched the fuel line off and pulled it back. So now all that remains is the throttle linkage. Here's the, the old new gasket. I'm going to use the one I made. And they'll fit tightly through. So I'm gently bend the linkage to get it out. I'm not bending it, I'm just releasing it. Alright guys, got this Troy built horse with this Tecumseh 8 horsepower HM80. Anyway,
So that carburetor, I pulled it off and tried to clean it up. I think it's missing some parts. So I'm going to go through and rebuild it. But uh, I really need to get the tiller going. So I got another carburetor for it. And just show you the differences of the carburetor. So the throttle linkage and the choke lever are different on the carburetor that uh, came in the mail. It's got this throttle plate and this choke lever to swap out and that's what we're going to do. Alright guys, got this Tecumseh carburetor for an HM80. It's for a Troy built horse tiller. I think the tiller I got was repowered but this uh, matches up to the carburetor that was on the HM80. I'm thinking by the numbers that the horse I have is a a 70's model. I think it's a horse one. I think the uh, first three digits are two two six or nine. I can't remember. But there's the carburetor. Alright guys, here's the new carburetor. I pulled the old one off and Man, it was just locked up solid. So I cleaned it up pretty good and did a brief, regular, simple green uh, soak. And I heard that if you don't use the uh, simple green D, I think it is, that it can etch and blacken the aluminum. So I didn't let it go for too long because I just had regular simple green and it started darkening the aluminum. I pulled it out pretty early. <clears throat> Anyways, this is the replacement carburetor. It's supposed to be an original Tecumseh carburetor. And as you see, the throttle plate and the choke lever differ. And they included the proper ones in the parts kit. It came with the carburetor and that's what we're going to replace this choke lever here with that big air filter on that horse tiller on that motor this choke lever is not long enough and this the throttle plates a different configuration we'll swap that out or move that little screw right there in that plate and this screw here, pull the levers out and swap them. Alright guys, so with the carburetor I ordered, this is the included parts that came with it. Of course you got one gasket, why they couldn't include the other gasket? You know, what's the deal? Um, you got one of the screws for the butterfly plate why the second one was not included, don't know. Then you got the plastic grommet that goes in the hole. And the choke lever and the throttle plate. So I will pull the screws out of that plate and the choke plate and they do require Loctite and as you can see on the new one it's got the dried Loctite already on the screw so this takes a T10 Torx to get those plates off to get the levers out
gonna watch the spring here. And that's all it is to that. Alright guys, you can see the screw I pulled out. It's got remnants of the Loctite on there, but we're going to fix it up again. So using the blue Loctite 242. Just put a drop on there and I'll be letting it set up as I pull the other side off. Just let that dry as we work on it. Okay, now we got the choke side. Just be mindful of your springs. I'll just pull the, the bushing and the little shim or the washer and the spring off, transfer it over. I'll hit the hole here on the new one with a shot of Loctite too, a little droplet. My one screw, the Loctite kind of ran off of it. so. I'll just swap out all the parts. Put that to the side for later usage. Keep your parts if you rebuild a carburetor you might need them. Drop a Loctite and I'll wipe the excess off before I slide it down in through the carburetor. You don't want the thing seizing up on you. Okay, I'll stick the plate in, in case you're curious, well, hey, which side goes in? This is the side, you can tell where it was mated to the piece of brass from the marks. Guys, I got the choke plate started. The little screw. I'm gonna tighten it just a little bit and just get it snug. And then check for movement. And I'm gonna try to make sure the plate is even with the machine part in the bottom of the brass and also has clearance for the, the little orifice there. So that's looking good so I'm going to go on and snug it up. Got to drop a drop of Loctite on it. So we're snug. Make sure we don't have any residual Loctite on this side. I'll go on and give it a wipe just in case and also you want to check the 
back of the brass rod and make sure that none's running down it to where it can seize the carb up or the lever. And guys, I'm not sure if you can see the little dab of Loctite sticking out of the back of the threads. There we go. But I'm going to get a Q-tip and stick in there and clean that up. I could give you trouble in the future. If you're going to clean one of these carbs, check out these orifices. Let's see, where are they? There we go. Come on, get on camera. There you go. See the three orifices there? That's on the throttle plate side. One, two, three. Just show you inside there. In case you're cleaning one and don't know what type of orifices it has. Alright guys, so I Q-tip the Loctite and you can see the fuzz. So you don't want to leave that stuff in there, you're going to have a headache. So, tweezers and I'll remove it. There's a little bit more. I'll get that cleaned up. Alright guys, so for the future I'm going to go ahead and hit a little dollop of Loctite in there. So this will be setting up. So for the future, if I put it on something else and need this other choke lever, I could just run the screw in there. I put a little Loctite on the screw threads too. To let them harden up. There we go. Put a little dab on there to let them solidify. If we ever use it on something else, then we can just use the screw with the dried Loctite and go with it. All right here's the throttle linkage. I'll take the bushings and assembly and spring off, place it on the new one on the replacement. Alright guys, you see the bent end of the spring there? It needs to lap over. Put spring tension on the lever itself on the plate so I'm going to lap it on over. Well where are we here? There we go. And you can see just by the very nature of the spring and I'll go check the old carburetor too just to double check it. But just the very nature of how the spring is coiled and how it it binds up that that would be the correct side. There you go. Alright guys, I'll put the throttle mechanism in. We'll get the spring set up in just a minute. As you can see, There's your stop for the throttle plate, the little screw. And then here's your spring. Let's focus up here and zoom in. Okay. And we'll give it a wrap, put some tension on it. Pull it on beyond 
Okay, you can see it's against my thumb there. Grab it and pull it on around the back side of that aluminum, as you see. And then down into place. Let's check for functionality and it's returning so the spring's working properly. Okay. Now I'll put the, the throttle plate on and once again the telltale sign of the mating surface of the brass. I'll tell you which way that goes. So, just double check it. Now on this one I'm going to use the, uh, the screw with the drive Loctite. Snug it on up the rest of the way. It's a little brass screw, guys. It doesn't have to be wrenched in there. All right. Throttle side nice and smooth actuation. Choke side nice and smooth. The old carb on that. Taylor, you could not budge either plates. Alright, so we got those swapped out. Um, now we'll make a gasket. They included the gasket for the intake side. As you see. Why did they not include it for the breather side? So we will make this one. Alright guys, got some uh, DIY gasket material here. This is the Fell Pro Kit 3060. And it uh, gives you a few different types. Four different types of gasket material. Cork rubber, rubber cellulose, rubber fiber, and another cork rubber sheet. But um, so I don't. I'm going to use this material here. So I'll just put this up. If you need just an all-purpose gasket kit, this is a nice kit to get. I'm going to use this here. It's also Felpro. 3157 rubber fiber sheet suggested gasket applications timer cover fuel pump differential cover distributor base sealing oil water gasoline so we'd be doing gasoline so I'll open that up and we'll get to work I will see maybe if I can get lucky and be able to store it in the plastic that it came in so I cut it off with an exacto knife nice and even at the top so I'll unsheathe that hopefully it'll work for later it might be 
a sticker there. Let's see. Okay. See how it stacks up with our factory gas. I'm not going to mic it or anything, but. Pretty similar. It's a million and one different ways you can do this. If you want to make the duplicate gaskets, just trace it out. I would lay it out to where you minimize your waste as such. You can take a pencil and trace that out. I think I'm going to go on and trace one. So I can have an extra throttle body side on hand or intake runner, whatever you want to call it. See if you can see that in the light. There we go. They make nice gasket punching sets that are really nice. You can try the X-Acto knife. Take your time. You can do pretty good with the with the blade. Use straight edges. For the fastener holes, you can use these hollow punches. This is a cheap Harbor Freight set. Nine piece hollow punch kit. You can use a piece of brass. Neck it up or down, depending on what size you need. 308, I've used it for a lot of fasteners. 223, 6 millimeter, so on and so forth. Chamfer them up real good. and They're limited time usage. You can use them a few times before they get dull with the brass. Just chamfer them and they'll sharpen right back up. Alright guys, so we'll cheat on this one a little bit. Remember when you're in elementary school and used to trace stuff? Try to get it as tight as you can. And just lightly take a pencil. And there you have it. I'll 
take our tape and transfer it onto our gasket material and just select color and follow the lines. If you like, you can take a nice sharp razor and go on and cut it off of the carburetor. Good enough. Now we'll place it on our gasket material. To minimize our waste. Cut the overall out with probably a pair of scissors, nice sharp shears, and then exact to the remainder.
chance I can whip up a cake. Alright, get the hollow punch from a fastener location. I was on my workbench, I just hit it with a hammer, but as it is, I can just work through it like that. Alright, let's check the fit real quick. Let's see if we got pretty close. Looks pretty good. And just follow the lines. Exactly about the center, puncture two holes, we'll be good on that. Take the new car, and I'm just going to try to push that through. All right, with a good amount of fiddling, I finally got the linkage through. Now we'll put the gasket on. Alright, there we go.
getting started. I'll get the other side started. These little nuts are kind of tough to get started. I got big hands and Side smug, smug up this side here. Things groovy. Now I will show you here. Over the nipple. Okay. Let's see if I can get her the rest of the way. There we go. Get the clamp dealy. Alright, get it where we can reach it later. Perfect. For the breather. All right, the breather is just hanging idly by. Get my gasket I made for that. I wipe that mating surface off. screwed up the breather hose should go over top of the fuel hose so I'm gonna have to pull that off real quick. Reroute. Okay. 
All right, bring their hoses back. Gasket. There we go. Let's get that started ever so gently. Get on. There we go. Well, let's snug that down good. Snug this side. That's good and snug. All right, and finally, it's a 7 16 inch bolt that holds the breather on to the base of the engine. treatment in there it's the uh, Startron so hopefully to prevent any issues in the future carburetor as Terrell says carburetor you know awesome jugs see there so they come with a square plug Half-inch drive pulls that out nicely, and then the hoses. And of course, it's getting ready to rain. Wipe the threads off. All right, of course, it starts raining as soon as you get to do anything. Non-ethanol premium. Startron fuel stabilizer in it with the excellent jug. A little shot in there. enough just to see if she'll crack. So I got this machine off a really nice woman that uh, lives about an hour south of us. Super nice lady. Anyway, it was her husband's machine. He had passed away. Um, I told her I would get it going, and obviously, you know, keep him in mind when it came to, to getting it going. But uh, he had this machine, I think she said he bought it new in the 70s. I'm thinking that's a new power head, probably in the 90s. I think this is a mid-70s machine. 
Anyway, I cleaned the carburetor up on it the other week. Uh, missed something, obviously. I think I need to get a rebuild kit and rebuild it. I think there's some uh, springs. Maybe some seats or something missing out of it. But anyway, <clears throat> put some fuel through it, and it did run. It fired up. Hey, Moses. What's doing, son? Neighbor Scott's coming over. Hey, boy. Coming in the dry, boy. Okay. It's back to where we're at. So I'm going to get this thing fired up here. See if she'll get going. I'm going to probably put a splash of gas in the breather hole. There's no dust really around here right now. So get this thing primed up and fired up. Changed the oil in it the other week. Put some brand new SAE 30 in it. So we're good to go there. Check the spark. It's got spark. Like I said the other day, it would fire over. Just wouldn't run because of the carburetor. Throttle cable broke, guys. So you can see I got a zip tie around the throttle down there. Just kind of not wide open throttle, but pretty close to it. Just to run it for a moment. But, uh, put a shot of gas in the breather hole. Disperse for a minute. And let's see what she will do. Level it up and chalk. There we go. Double check the oil. Let's give it a shot. Got choke. It's a cold start. First time ever really starting it. Let's see if she'll start. Carbs not quite prime. Let's give it a shot of juice.
running. A little rough, but I'll uh, clean that up here. And she is running. Just gonna put the air filter back on. Yeah, this is brand new. Need to replace the tine seals and the and the axle seals. But for right now, we're gonna top it off and use it till we're able to do that.